it, it goes to that that whole concept of peace as well mm -hmm. and that you, you know and we all want peace inside and we all want peace then outside and, and surrounding us and I think when you're the parent of a child with special needs you you truly recognize that uh, I don't want to limit it there but I we were talking about this particular experience yes. because I think any marginalized group feels the same way in many respects yeah but in this particular case it's they're not just marginalized for themselves it's they're marginalized for their their child because they don't have that marginalization it's their child that does mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and usually when you talk about people who are marginalized it's 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 a group yes. and and everyone who belongs to that group and yet here it's the child so whether it's the look that a parent sees from a stranger in a mall as their child is having a breakdown because of their uh, be because of their condition mm -hmm. whether it's that stare whether it's that simple just misunderstanding whether it's someone who takes advantage of their child because mm -hmm. of their uh, their openness and their willing to their ability to love everyone unconditionally uh, and there is no closer connection among human beings I don't think there is a closer connection by nature and naturally among human beings than a connection with a child and a parent exactly so when you now have this parent of someone who needs more care mm -hmm. and is vulnerable to a world that is not always kind Oh, wow, that's a. I, I think I needed to repeat that. Vulnerable to a world that is not always kind. Wow, that that's the world we really live into, huh? It is, and that's the world of a parent of a child with special needs. Wow. So when you saw that love, and that you saw that openness, it was a breath of fresh air for those parents to have someone like you standing in front of them l letting them know that there are people out there and mm -hmm. that there is a movement out there not just for them and for their child but for all children in the world to find peace whether it is about your politics whether it is about your race whether it is about your gender whether it is about any of the things whether it is about your f financial situation any of those things those are the things that keep us separate those are the things that keep us from having peace yes yes and in that room there was nothing but love mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in that room all of those people were at peace so at that particular moment yes and what and we there were people of different faiths yeah. many different, different faiths. cultures and backgrounds and and, and that's one of the, the and, and you felt that one positive love of peace yes love and peace and you know when we talk about the peace poll mm -hmm. and what brought us you and I together mm -hmm. for the very first time yes in that room there were several hundred people and yet the focus was on one obelisk one image and yet on that image there were eight different languages spoken yeah I but they all said the same words yes may peace prevail on earth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the messages were about that one phrase may peace prevail on earth and our families do their best and they are wonderful examples of peace as we just talked about and this symbol now stands in the center of our complex as a reminder as a visual reminder because we again when when we have those moments when someone doesn't treat us respectfully or treat us with peace and kindness we need sometimes those reminders yes and and my hope in doing this ceremony was that this simple obelisk alone doesn't bring peace but it reminds us of that moment when we all st stood and sat together mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we shared the peace of that room. Truly. So when we have those dark moments and we pass by that pole, we're reminded that there is hope, that there is a ray of sunshine, 
that there is the possibility of peace even in the darkest of our yes. times. Uh, you know, God has created us in different languages or with different languages, different colors, different cultures, different nations, different tribes. But it's so important that we try to understand each other. And I like the thing about a peace pool having different languages. Even though we may speak different languages, that does not, and that should not be a wall towards us all striving towards peace. Because we can say let peace prevail on, on earth in all different languages. And you don't need to be saying it in the same language to mean it or to live it. Correct. And Correct. that makes it more beautiful. Absolutely. And, and it's a reminder that we always still have work to do. Mm -hmm. As long as there is someone living without food, without clean water, yeah. without a home or shelter, we need to always be working to bring that person to peace. You yes. can't have peace when you have need. It's very, it's very yeah. difficult to have peace when, when there are people who have needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a very fine line. It is an extreme very fine line. fine line, yeah.